Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's edition of Cinecid Television Theater. I'm Bob Clark, the Executive Director of Cinecid Enterprises Incorporated. I'm really pleased that you could be with us for tonight's program. The next 30 minutes, as usual, were created by our kids, boys and girls who range in age from 7 to 17 years. They come to us from 40 neighboring communities, and what you're going to see is their cable television show. To get things started, last week the Carters went with their friends on a shopping expedition, and things didn't go too well at all. We're back home now. The story continues on The Clintons. Yes, I just heard. It's a shame. Oh, and that poor mother. Actually, I'm glad it didn't happen here. Okay. Fine. Bye-bye. You know, it's just terrible. The poor little car boy being kidnapped in the middle of the mall. Yes, it is. Now, let's see. Where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, how long have the Carters lived here? Just a couple months. Just the mother and the children? Yes. I see. Well, are they a quiet family? Yes, they are. Why are you so interested in this family? Well, you might say for personal reasons. Finally asleep now. Whatever the doctor gave her really knocked her out. She was so upset. Look, why don't you have a Coke or water or something stronger? No, no. Have a seat, then. I can't sit down. Don, I feel just awful. I feel like it was my fault. Why? Well, if I would have got in touch with your mom, none of this would have happened. Miss Sandy, it's not your fault. What did the policeman say? Well, after we told him about Chip's disappearance, they called two policemen in uniform, and they called a detective. And he should be here any minute, I guess. That service for you. I'll get it. If there's anything I can do, anything my sister can do. Thank you. How's your mother? Well, she's asleep right now. The doctor gave her a sedative. Can I cook you dinner? No, no. We'll be all right. Thank you. Okay. Is Linda here? No. Didn't she go to the mall with you? Yes, she did. And she didn't come back with you? No, she didn't. He couldn't be kidnapped. Oh. Don, anything I can do. Thank you. Well, my parents said I could stay a while and keep you company. Thanks, John. Hello. I'm Detective Sergeant Josephson, Greencastle Police Department. Come in. Don Carter. Don, have a seat. Oh. 
why don't you let the detective have a seat? Oh, sure. Sorry. Thank you. I'm Detective Sergeant Joseph. Can you all see him? Yes. I have a perfect view from here. No. Can you see him? Why, your brother's one is missing. Not me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that you look like somebody else I know. You know, like we've met before. Who knows? Maybe we have. Detective Inspector Josephson. How come he's a dead ringer for Gary Clinton? Stay with us. <clears throat> There's more to come. Last week in Uncle Flywheel's workshop, you remember Bucky had a little difficulty with the car, and at the end of the episode, he saw something very, very strange. Let's find out what it was as we venture forth to Uncle Flywheel's workshop. Excuse me, did anyone leave the trunk open? Who ate all the food? Bucky, as the head of this household, I think my question comes first. Okay, fine. Now, if, if you want to all start. Bucky. Okay, fine. Nellie, did you leave the trunk open? No. Enrico? No. Jimbo, did you come back down here after I put you to bed? No, Uncle Flo, I went right to sleep. Bucky, were you looking for anything in the trunk? No, sir. Well, then who left the trunk open? Wait a minute, what do you mean there's no food? Good morning, Uncle Flywheel. What do you mean there's no food? I mean there's nothing in the cupboard. There's nothing in the refrigerator. There's nothing in the freezer. Not even a bowl of gruel. What's gruel? It's a type of hot cereal. Never Not mind. Not a thing? Not a morsel. Jimbo, did you eat everybody's breakfast again? 
No, I can fly well. I just keep a couple apples in my socks. <coughs> All right, let's go take a look. But I don't understand. I know, we just went shopping the other day. It was cool, okay? It was like five hours. Uncle Ben, and you left the dance class. I'm going to take a shower, please. It's cool. We got it. We got it. Now we're going to eat anything last night. Yeah, but now I can't eat both breakfasts. I'll be quiet. We got it. What's in the box? You be sure to stay with us. Next week, we'll find out. A couple weeks ago, we premiered a rather interesting new series. It's called Kid Bits and it involves a selection of music and some efforts on the part of the youngest members of our organization and they come up with some very very imaginative interpretations it's entirely their idea let's join the hostess of the program is april richard and the series is called kid bits <laughs> I'm Ifor Shard for Kid Bits, and this week we'll be taking a look at a group of kids who are acting out a picnic scene. Now the musical selection they picked for this pantomime happens to be rhythm guitar. Let's take a look. Now remember, these kids are doing it in mime without any props. These two kids, Shannon Bushnell and Matt McHenry, are spreading out the blanket for the picnic. Billy McDermott and his friend Steve are helping to carry in the cooler and stopping for a soda. John Seely and Laura Whipple are helping to put out the food but they are obviously having an argument. Let's see who wins. Jay Brennan setting up for a barbecue. John Seeley, Matt McHenry, and Laura Whipple are now lighting the charcoal. Too much on. Well, everybody comes in and starts to eat, just like a regular picnic. Well, that's it for this time. Next time on Kibbits, we'll have another fantastic Kibbit idea. I'm April Shard for Kibbits. I'll see you next time. Thank you, April, and thank you, kids. And remember, what you see 
is entirely the creation of the young people. And that's not an easy task when you're 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 years of age. By the same token, some years back, a youngster really made America stand up and take notice. His name was Jimmy Boyd. And in the early 50s and on to the 60s, he was quite a phenomenon in the entertainment industry. For the past few months, we've enjoyed to, the opportunity to recreate highlights of his musical career. A few weeks ago, as we celebrated the Easter holiday, we thought it might be interesting to prepare something that's sort of related to springtime, this kind of year, I guess. And so this evening, we have a very, very special broadcast. We've never tried anything like this before. Here is, it's Jimmy Boyd. Tilstrom, Jim Henson, watch out. 
In addition to the talents of Aaron Brody, what you were able to see there, of course, were the abilities of our graphics division because Bonnie Bunny was the creation also of our kids. And I congratulate them for a job very well done. All right, on to something completely different. If at Cinekid we provide kids with a non-commercial opportunity to work in the field of communications, we also appreciate the chance to share with you just what's happening in neighborhood movie theaters across the nation. Through the cooperation of the major studios at Hollywood, we're able to bring to you some glimpses of the current films. The series is called What's New at the Movies? And our host, Mr. Frank Smith. Hi, I'm Frank Smith for What's New at the Movies. And tonight, we'll be taking a look at The Bounty, starring Mel Gibson, Anthony Hopkins, and Sir Lawrence Olivier. It is perhaps the most famous drama in maritime history, the story of Captain Bly, Mr. Christian, and a mutiny on the bounty. But it is a story that has been filled with misconceptions about the key players and the actual event for almost 200 years. Atlantic partnership, please. Orion Pictures' new release, The Bounty, tells the true tale of this legendary mutiny for the first time. Shot in three corners of the world, from London to Tahiti, it stars critically acclaimed actors Anthony Hopkins and Mel Gibson as Christian and Bly. William, a test? Yes, the circumnavigation. The circumnavigation. Together, they tell an amazing story based on historic fact, a story of close friendship, stormy seas, a tropical paradise, and betrayal. How do you think you're doing? Time. Yes, Bly and Christian have been friends, and Bly asked Christian, would you like to come with me on this one? That was the biggest shock of his life that Christian turned against him. It all began as a voyage to Tahiti to collect breadfruit plants to use as cheap food for English slaves. Commanding the bounty was Bly, a brilliant seaman and tough disciplinarian. I am master of the bounty. And I say I'm commander by law. I am the first. En route to Tahiti, Bly promoted his good friend, Fletcher Christian, to first mate. Along with a crew of young, inexperienced sailors, they endured cramped quarters and an unsuccessful attempt to round Cape Horn. Squirt away! Ah! We must stand back! Bly! In my opinion, we should put a bounce! In my opinion, we should not! After months of hardship, the bounty finally reached the welcoming paradise of Tahiti. It must have been like um, the first guy who stepped on the moon. They're these creatures, and they're all sort of swarming. Not only are they uh, attractive, but, uh, but they're friendly as well. For the crew of young adventurers, many still in their teens, the island of Tahiti was a pleasure paradise. Like the rest of the mutineers, Fletcher Christian succumbed to the temptations of the island and the Tahitian princess. The bounty's mission was forgotten by all but Bly. He was losing control of his men in a battle against an island utopia. For Australian director Roger Donaldson, filming this island fantasy was a reality which involved shooting complicated night scenes and working with almost 700 inexperienced extras on location. Shooting on location always has its pluses and its minuses. Um, the pluses are that what you're shooting looks real. You're in amongst it, you've got the real locations, you've got the real people. The difficulties are that um, you're suddenly in a place working where uh, where movies aren't necessarily a way of life all the time. The process of filming this island paradise also meant enduring tropical storms in Tahiti, something producer Bernie Williams hadn't planned on. You say, what's the weather like? And I say, great, marvelous. And then after three hurricanes, they say, you know, it's the first year that ever happened. <laughs> One star who weathered the storms was the bounty herself. Outfitted with scaffolds, pressure hoses, and fans, her storm sequences were carefully orchestrated. Ah! 
three years in the making and recreated after painstaking research, her decks were to carry a crew of sailors not yet ready to return to the rigidity of the British Navy. And so, after 200 years, the story of a friendship that ended in a mutiny and became a legend is revealed in the motion picture, The Bounty. Thank you, Frank. If indeed that's what's playing at theaters across the country, let's find out from Mark Weaver what you'll be seeing on this week's Cinekid Family Movie Night. Hi, this is Mickey Mouse, and this Saturday night at Cinekid's Family Movie Night, we'll be presenting another classic Disney animated feature in another one of our salutes to Walt Disney. Tickets are $2.00. Doors open at 7 and the show starts at 7.30. For more information, call 659-4696. See you there. Thank you, Mark. I sincerely hope if you are Disney fans that you'll come on out this weekend. Join us here at Cinecid. Family movie night, Saturday night. A salute to Walt Disney. Use the opportunity as well to visit the Cinekid campus. Take a tour, meet the staff, and meet the kids. If you need assistance in getting here, give us a call at 659-4696. Indeed, this may be your opportunity to become a part of the wonderful world of Cinekid. Until next week then, same time, same cable channel. This is Bob Clark. Good night and God bless. I'm Jim Jolly. I play Chipper and the Clintons. In the story, Chipper gets kidnapped, but that's only make-believe. Remember, kids, you never go anywhere with a stranger. Can I have my present now? Sure, go ahead. with a picture? That's perfect. Fade <laughs> in. <laughs> what is your name? Fade out. No, fade in. <laughs> <laughs> this is silly. <clears throat> yes. What is your name? My name. <laughs> um... Are we rolling? Is everything working? Yes, we're rolling. <clears throat> okay, do you want to fade in on this or? Uh, <laughs> Don't say. We can, we can try it again. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Hello, I'm A4 Ashard for Kibbits. You're probably asking yourself, can you see this paper? <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure.